28 into the family of Elder Allen Oribo Yuho in Ahoda East Local Government area of River State. She had a very humble and rich she had a very humble and rich upbringing considering the family she was raised from. She enjoyed all the rights and privileges of a young woman while at her tender age. She was loved for her simplicity and display of integrity in all her dealings, even among her peers. Late Mrs. Nina Obupa Emmanuel to her folks started her primary school, her primary education at Ipo Community Primary School in 1948 and completed her primary education in 1954. She was trained as an auxiliary nurse between 1956 and, and 1957. And later got registered as a social worker but didn't complete the training as a result of relocation of Mrs. Almudina Francisco to Spain in 1959. At about 1955, she was hired by a Spanish woman to nurse her ailing mother. She was made to undergo a nursing course for a year. In that process, she was remained in that service until 1959. However, during the Civil War, she was forced to work with the medical team of the Nigerian Army as a nurse to attend to injured soldiers. This was the reason she was nicknamed Biafran Nurse. During the Biafran Nurse during, the, during and immediately after the Civil War. Late Mrs. Lina Ogupa Emmanuel Utwerpo was a devoted Christian. Her Christian life was punctuated with challenges considering the traditional chieftaincy status of her husband. Yet she gave herself totally to Jesus. She allowed nothing to separate her from the love of God, neither the traditional chieftaincy obligations of the family, nor sickness, but she went on to serve God with joy and humility. In her local church, First Baptist Church Ihab, where she was accordingly baptized by Reverend E. N. Aji on 4th of April 2010, she was until her demise a committed member of the Circle Two House Fellowship and the Women Missionary Union, most remarkable for her commitment to her faith, is the fact that while on her sick bed, she insisted on paying her dues and other contributions to the church. Naturally, Lina Ogupa Emmanuel Utwerpo was a reasonable, quiet, moving woman, cheerfully interactive with people, but she abhorred social clubs for the fact that gossip triumph more than club activities. Because of her husband's sympathy for Chief Obaka Miawolo of blessed memory, she identified herself and fully supported the UPN, a support she sustained until the dissolution of the party, even after the party did not win seats in the area. Recently, she dug, she doubly showed sympathy for the People's Democratic Party until her demise, even as she was not a registered member. This Mrs. Lina Ogupa Emmanuel Utwerpo was happily married to late chief Emmanuel N. Nene Utwerpo, a.k.a. Governor General, in 1960, with seven surviving biological children and seven step children. This Mrs. Lina Ogupa Emmanuel Utwerpo passed on to be with our Lord on the 9th of Wednesday, 28 December 2022, after a protracted illness. To God be the glory. I'm gonna be
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Round up your prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father and our God in heaven, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus, we are thankful and grateful unto you for this special moment. We are asking, Lord, that your divine protection, your divine comfort, your divine consolation, Lord, to bear the demise, the loss of our dear mother, that grace that no one gives, that peace that no one gives except you, will rest upon their lives. In the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, from now henceforth, your glory, your presence will protect and guide them and lead them in the name of Jesus. Amen. That they are going out, that they are coming in, will be under your divine control. In the name of Jesus, no evil shall befall them. In all their endeavors, in all their careers, you will be with them. You will be with them. In the name of Jesus. We also pray, Lord of God, for the church. We pray for the community. The Lord, you will comfort our hearts in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. May your presence continue to be with them. From now to the end, in the name of God, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
the table. Now there was a dropper, a certain disciple, named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and armed deed which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. And for as much as Peter was married to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood at him, weeping, and showing the clothes and garments which daughters made while she was still with them. Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed. And turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when they had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. And it was known throughout all Europe, and many believed in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. A life well spent. A life well spent. And a life well spent. That we mean a life well lived. Let me play with you again, if you don't mind. Rise up to your feet one more time and say to one or two persons close to you, left and right, please live your life well. Life unto God. Why do you need to live your life well? The reason is that life is not your own. Somebody gave it to you. And one day, you will take it away from you. Why do you need to live your life well? You need to live your life well because you don't have the luxury of time to live as much as you want to live. The scripture is a read a while ago. Give us a narration of what transpired in the life of one woman whose name was Dorcas, alias Tabitha. She lived her life well. She became sick and she died because appointed unto man, a woman, wants to die. And after death, that is judgment. And when she died, because she was a good woman, 
nice woman, lover of the people, generous woman, a philanthropist. She gave clothes, food, money, shelter, accommodation, mobility, anything you can name to people. She lived to help people around her, and she died. And we know that she had made clothes for came together to cry. And then they sent Apostle Peter to come, please, pray for her. And Peter came, prayed for the woman, and the woman came back to life. And that was Joyce. A life well spent. If you read obituary posters, you will come across statements like this. With gratitude to the Almighty God over a life well spent. In deep appreciation to the will of the Almighty God over a life well spent. In total submission to the will of the Almighty God over a life well spent. The question is, is it true that everybody that dies has spent his life well? Is it obituary announcement that will make the person live life well? Let's answer one simple question, one pertinent question I'm begging for answer. What is a life well spent? I will spend a little time to give a biblical description of a life well spent. And they are as follows. A while life well spent is a life spent as a practical Christian. A life spent living your life as a practical Christian. Not a nominal Christian now. Not just a churchless Christian now. Not belonging to any religious group. Not a life lived in religiosity. Not a life lived in idol worship. A life lived as number one, born again. Number two, living like Christ. A life lived as a godly person. A life lived remembering your creator. A life lived giving honor to God. as a life well spent. Number two, biblical description of a life well spent is a life lived as a disciple of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that Dorcas was a disciple of Jesus. Who is a disciple? A follower of Christ. Who is a disciple? A learner on the, of, the, of the word of God. Who is a disciple? An apprenticeship under, an apprentice under the leadership of the spirit of God, of Jesus Christ. Who is a disciple? Is someone who is interested in learning about God and doing what God says. A life lived, studying about God. That's a life well spent. Number three, description of a life well lived. It's a life lived in doing good. The Bible says Dorcas was involved in doing good. Many people are doing very terrible things today. That's why there is killing. That's why there is stealing. That's why there is kidnapping. That's why there is hand robbery. That's why there are all manner of evil here and there. People are living their life very, very terribly. Help me say to your neighbor, I am sure you are not one of them. The society is the way it is now because people are not interested in living their lives well. People are claiming landed property belonging to other people. Women are parking away another woman taking over their husbands. And men are taking away other people's wives. People are killing themselves for all manner of things. For contract, for position, for money, for job, for house, for car, for other things. God wants us to live our lives in doing good, not in doing evil. But we shall be remembered by what we have done. And we shall be rewarded for the good things that we have done. And we shall be punished for the bad things we have done. In case you are alive right now, and all you are interested in doing are evil things. I beg of you in the name of Jesus, repent. Because the day will come when you will lie like this. Like this, mama. And at that time, you will give account of all your actions unto God. A life well lived is a life lived in practical generosity. Dorcas was a giver. The Bible says he made clothes for widows. He gave food to the hungry. He gave food to the fatherless. He took care of people. How are you living your own life now? Some people will eat and eat and throw away some, and there are hungry people around, around them. Some people have plenty of houses, they will not allow anybody to sleep in it. After all, I wonder the number of houses. A man sleeps, but in one room, 
inside one room, one bed. And one of one bed, one small space. In the big bar, one person sits on how many chairs? One. In the staff food, you will eat only what your table can accommodate. Why not help those who are around you? The problem with Nigeria is because one person wants to lose all the money. Bank has asked us to bring us back all our old notes. They are taking the money back. Now give us back, they are not giving us. But they are giving to some people. And the general public is suffering. God wants us to help people around us. That's how to live your life well. That you are the only one eating. You are the only one enjoying. Other people are suffering. You are not living your life well. People say, eat alone. What happens? Die alone. I'm not the one that said that to me. I only said my own. If you eat alone, what will happen to you? But if you share what you have with others, and why you'll be blessed, you will prosper them all, and God will bless you. My grandmother usually say that a kitchen where many people eat food, God does not allow that kitchen to lack food. But a kitchen where only one person eats, God will give you only one word of one person will eat. You will have prosper more than you are now if you are helping those who are around you. Doctors help people around her. So when she died, all the women, the widows came together and cried. This good woman cannot die like that. They cried and they prayed. Then they invited Peter. And Peter came and saw the men were crying. They were, some of them were wearing the clothes that the woman made for them. And they were showing the clothes. Up as I begin to talk about the dividends of a life well spent. If you live your life well, what do you stand to gain? Number one, you stand to gain eternal life in the kingdom of God. Here on earth, you will receive the blessings of God, the prosperity of God, the favor of God. Here on earth, God will answer your prayers. Doctors, live your life well. Bring the pay for her. God answer our prayers. Here it is. Those who are not living their lives well can pray all day, all night. 40 days, 40 nights. They can empty 25 liters of olive oil on your head. Yet your prayers will not be answered. You can fast for one million years. Your prayers will not be answered. Because the prayer of a sinner is abomination for God. The life well did. When you live your life well, then your name will be transferred from the book of death and be written in the book of life. Child of God, as I begin to conclude, how are you spending your life now? Are you living your life in Androbri or in belonging to the highest court group? Are you living your life in doing rituals? Are you living your life in cheating others? Are you living your life in sinfulness? Please, you have an opportunity today. Mama's death is a crusade for your repentance. Give your life to Christ. Repent from your sins. Accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. And become a member of a Bible-believing church. I am of the Baptist denomination. There are several other Christian churches. Come to the Baptist church to worship or join any other Christian church. Worship God in spirit and in truth. Live your life well. Because one day, you will stand before God to give account of your life. Unto God. Shall we rise to our feet? Only remember. Only, only. The Korea family in Omega unit of Imaji Ekaya in Harbour community. Opata Kingdom, Ahoda East Local Government of River State, extend our gratitude and profound appreciation to all who have supported us in the entire process of giving our dear mother a befitting burial. Your respective support in which every category have been a source of strength and encouragement to us. We thank you from the depth of our hearts. May the Lord reimburse you for your kindness and grant you all journey mercies as you depart to your respective destinations in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you.
bless unto our own family. Bless this community. Bless Opata Kingdom. Bless the entire experiment. Bless every one of us. Thank you, my Father, for each who pray. Now, may the grace, the blessings.
as we go back and go back to the city. Amen. Amen. I pray you plenty the, for, the funds of this family. So much has been spent. We ask God to replenish the resources in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Pray for all those who have come to help them in one way or the other. Father, we pray that Lord you will bless them also in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, take all the glory, take all the honor. We pray that the enemy will not take the face of our mothers to terrorize any member of this family in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, in heaven, because we know whatever is committed into your hands is safe. Yes. To you be all the glory. Amen. To you be all the honor. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. And surely. Christ's and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. You are blessed in Jesus' name.